So we just finished up our last uh, hour of resting before we actually get into the uh, proofing stage. So at this point, it looks like um, we're gonna do a little more folding and then uh, we're gonna take it out and actually put it on the, uh, the tabletop here or the bench top. So let's see what it looks like. Same as before, looks very, very similar. Yeah, looks good. So with this, um, we're gonna do it a little differently. So before we were just folding the edge over into the middle. This time we're actually gonna pick it up from the middle and let it fold in on itself and then place it back down. Um, we're gonna do this a few times and then we're gonna put it on the uh, tabletop here. So I'm gonna wet my hands and we're actually gonna pick this up from the middle. Like so. And then let it go back down on itself. And we're gonna rotate 90 degrees and keep doing the same thing. That looks looks really good. Keeps looking better and better each time we uh, do this. I'm just gonna flower the surface here just a little bit. Like so, and then. Uh, Set this guy right on here. It says, uh, from my notes, sorry, I'm reading my notes here, what I got down here. It says, set the ball on the table, form a tense ball with the bench scraper. So, uh, you don't need a bench scraper, but it makes it uh, a little easier, I, I think, from, uh, from what I remember. Throw it on here. So, the way I remember doing this was, you kind of want to do a circular motion and pull towards yourself and keep turning the dough. Um, but I don't really like all this flour. This is probably too much flour. Um, This is probably cringy for real bakers or bread people, what I'm doing. I've seen people do it with their hands like this. Um, this is uh, supposed to build the tension Again, back in there. Oh, I think I messed that up. So you shouldn't be having it look like that. I think it was too much flour. But I can feel it coming around. We've kind of tucked the bottom all in nice and tight, and I can feel it getting more and more firm. I don't, I, you probably don't want to overdo this. I don't know what is under or overdoing it, but I feel like that's probably a good amount to stop at. It looks and feels really good. You can see it looks like a nice dough ball. It feels really good. It's not all wet anymore. It is dried up from this flour here. I'm gonna throw a little on top. So, and then uh, it says I'm gonna cover it and rest it for 30 or 40 minutes. I'm gonna use our same sheet that we had, sheet, towel. Okay, so that's good. I'm just gonna lay this over this guy. And the towel, from what I understand, kinda just helps um, regulate the temperature as far as uh, not letting cold air get onto it if you do have cold air, but also if there's gases coming out, it kind of helps keep it all contained. So that's it for now. We're going to come back in 30 or 40 minutes. Um, it says it should have relaxed and then I'm going to flour the proofing basket, which I can do right now, actually. I'm just going to use 
this flour that I had left over and throw that in there. And the same with this, I don't know if you can over flour this, I'm sure you, you can, you don't want that raw flour on there. Um, for uh, when it's cooking, you, you really don't want the raw flour, but you can definitely under flour it where it, uh, it'll stick to the, to the, whatever this thing's called, the liner. This is a Banneton, I think it's called Banneton. So I've had this uh, since the beginning of the year when I started doing all this stuff. Um, it's just got like a little elastic liner. You can just wash this with regular stuff. This is like, a, I don't know, it's like bamboo or something like that. I'm not really sure. It's really lightweight. But anyway, banditin. That's uh, what this thing is. And this just helps with proofing and shaping your dough ball. You can get them in different shapes. Like uh, you can get a square ones or um, uh, oval, different size round ones. I just have a round one. Um, so once it goes into here, we're going to let it rest for probably about four hours and then we'll be ready to bake. So we'll be back in a half hour or so, check on the dough. And, um, at that point, we're really just going to, um, put it in here. It looks like, yeah, looks like we're just going to put it in here and let it rest. And then we'll go from there. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Yeah, looks good to me. So uh, hopefully that's right. Hopefully we're doing this right. And uh, we'll check back in a few. So I lost track of time a little bit there. It was supposed to be 30 to 45 minutes and it was about an hour. So hopefully that doesn't negatively affect anything. Um, what I got in my notes here is that uh, after it rusted, it should be relaxed. And we're gonna flour the proofing basket, which we already did. And then we're going to wrap this thing up like a present and then place it in the banister. So uh, let's check it out and see what it looks like. And it does look relaxed. It looks nice. Um, so what I mean by wrapping like a present is we're going to pull from uh, the four sides plus the corners and kind of just pull it in, pull it in, pull it in and overlap each one. And it's going to really tighten it up. And then we're going to take that, we're going to flip it over and put it in the basket. So. The first fold I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the top one up to the bottom and then I'm going to start doing the two sides, the bottom up to the top, and then I'm going to do the four corners. And just like doing this earlier, I believe this is what helps uh, form the, the gluten in there. I'm not. 100% certain, but I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, it looks like good. We're gonna lightly flour this. And uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna use the scraper. Um, and then we're gonna plop it right in. So, kind of like that. It's not perfect, but it will do. I'll lightly flour the top. Should be good. This is probably unnecessary, but I'm kind of tucking the bottom in to tighten that up. That might be bad, it might be good. I'm not really sure. But uh, that's where we're at with it. So at this point it needs to rest like three to five hours. It really depends on the temperature and the activity of the dough. So I'm just going to kind of make a, a mental note of where we're at here. And then in a few hours we'll be able to throw it in the oven and make some bread.